Hey everyone, I'm Connor and welcome to my channel The Closet. If it's your first home here on my channel, I like to talk about all things luxury. So if that's something you're into, I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you're notified when I bring out new videos. And if you're returning, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, obviously, as the title suggests, this is my first ever Fendi made to order bag or oh, just my first ever made to order bag in general. And I'm so freaking excited. Can you feel the energy? Cause you should. If you have been watching Dale's Grinchmas series, uh, if you haven't, first of all, go and watch it. What are you doing with your life? But secondly, you would have seen a few days ago that she had vlogged a little chip into Fendi for the appointment. And she did do a bit of a, you know, a hinty hint of the bag that I got, but what she purposely, meticulously left out was that was not the actual bag that I chose. So you're going to see in this video exactly what I did pick. But thank you so much, Dale, for accompanying me on that trip. And like, let's get right into it. <laughs> so this made to order kind of appointment experience was a little different to the one that Dale had done earlier on in the year. Hers was the world of Fendi made to order shindig where she went down to Melbourne. She had like half of Italy on the phone. She had all of the exotics, all of the beading and all of that stuff to choose from. This is a very more refined version of a made to order experience and it's strictly limited to peekaboos. You have limited hardware options, limited leather colors, um, limited like bags to pick from in terms of like the different variations of a peekaboo and it's only calfskin leather and python leather and even with the python leather you cannot do the whole bag in python it's either the sides and the handle and strap only so it's a very refined made to order experience but the price point also is very um, achievable I guess for a made to order especially with Fendi so when I was in Fendi um, a month or two back now with Dale and the store manager had brought it up we had a little play around had a look at the prices and I was like mm, this ain't bad so that's kind of sent me down the rabbit hole now also I haven't I didn't just want to do this on a whim because I was like oh cool I can make my own bag the actual bag that was on offer that um, I wanted to do was a bag that I've been wanting for like freaking two years now. So if I picked the men's mini peekaboo ICU. This bag's probably only been about around been about only been around for about two years with Fendi, but ever since I saw it, I've been freaking lusting over it. But I didn't want to kind of just buy like a black one. I wanted to kind of get something that was a little bit more special. But then as time went on, they kept just bringing them out in incredibly neutral combinations. And I just thought, okay, well, maybe this is the bag, what they're going to do in neutrals and be very conservative. So I thought, look, I've waited long enough. I probably just buy one and um, no, I sound like I wouldn't be excited. I still would be excited, but I kind of wanted to like something a little bit special, especially because Fendi is such like a vibrant kind of, you know, flamboyant brand when it comes to the sequins and all the colors and everything like that. So I kind of didn't want to get something conservative, but I thought, look, it is what it is. Then when we were in Sydney, I saw the exact same bag with the Python trim on the handle. And I was like, who is she? Who is this bag? Where is she from? And then I thought, okay, it looks like they're starting to kind of like wake up, make them a bit more fun. And just seeing the Python on the handle really gave the bag like a lot of character. So when Dale and I were in Fendi a few weeks back, or a month back now, and the store manager, Adam, who said, hey, look, the made to order is coming for the peekaboos. If you guys are interested, here's what it would look like. We had a play on the iPad. And then um, because I could put Python on the handle, I was like, girl, I'm sold. And because of the price point was very realistic for a made to order, I guess. It was like the stars had aligned. So I thought, bugger it, like, I'm just going to do this pick my way and it'll be like exactly what I wanted. So last week, Dale and I went in for like a kind of pre-appointment appointment, just so we could have a play around with uh, the program that generates the bag and all the color options and everything. The physical trunk wasn't in the store yet with the actual leather samples and everything. So we were still just visualizing everything on the iPad. Um, but Dale and I went in last week did that and then after the appointment I was still I was more confused than ever I was like this is so hard I don't want to just yeah it was very hard <laughs> but Dale ultimately decided that the peekaboo options or the colors I guess for her weren't 
I guess, enough, which I totally get, especially with how many bags she does have. She didn't want to just kind of make a repeat or get a black bag or whatnot. So she decided not to go through with it. Keeping in mind, she does have like her actual epic made to order coming still because it's like stuck in customs or something. So like, she's fine. Don't worry about her. Um, but I was like gung ho going in for it. So then two days ago we went in, had the appointment. Girl. Was she overwhelmed? She was. I was like, oh my God, this is so hard. But thank God I had freaking Dale there to bloody calm the storm because it was hard. Like <laughs> you start to panic and it was like, Bleh! but anyways, we walked in, they had the trunk set up. It was a vibe. There weren't too many bogans in the shop, ruining the atmosphere. Every now and then one sneaks in, but you know, they quickly like get out. So that was good and went through the appointment and I'm going to look at my phone as I talk just so I can jog my memory. So obviously my favorite color is blue, but I wear like lots of blue, black, gray, you know, like navies, like bluey grays, blah, blah, blah. So obviously my color palette's pretty like vanilla, but I wanted a bag that was either super fun or very classic but then I was in two minds like if I go with something super classic well I think well that was a waste of it but I still got what I wanted then if I go with something super fun would I be like oh I only just did this because it was a made to order it's not exactly what I would use so it's a real fine line when you're doing a made to order to kind of pick the best of both worlds so with the men's peekaboo, you don't have the option of picking this bar that sits in as like a partition in the center of the bag, like you would with the female peekaboo bag. So I'm kind of glad that that was the case because that would make the whole decision a lot harder. But basically you could pick from gold, palladium or um, ruthenium hardware, like this beautiful kind of light gray hardware. And I opted to have palladium hardware. Also with the turn lock, you could either have an enamel set initials. So it'd be like a blue enamel, red enamel, green enamel with like up to three letters for the turn lock. I chose not to do that just automatically. I thought that it would kind of ju make the bag a bit juvenile or it just wouldn't flow or it'd be too messy. So I automatically just decided I didn't want to have that. The next contender was the Swarovski, Swarovski, I can't say that word, the crystal hardware, okay? And can I learn to say this word? Swarovski, Swarovski, I can't say it. Never gonna be able to say it. Um, you could have it in like blue or black or just normal clear crystal color, which I freaking love, like that's a vibe. But for me, I knew I wanted Python on the bag, so I felt like it would be another kind of texture that would kind of clash with that for me. So I thought I'm just gonna go with silver. I always prefer palladium hardware out of all the hardware colors anyways. And because I was thinking like a blue combination, silver and blue go really well together. So I automatically just ruled all the other options out and stuck with palladium hardware. And when you're kind of designing these bags, it's best to start with the hardware first and then build everything around it. So I already had the palladium hardware. I knew I didn't want to have Python on the sides of the bags bags. I didn't want to have Python on the side of the bag. I only wanted it on the handle and strap. So I could automatically rule out that option as well. So then we had to pick the color. So Dale was fantastic. And Adam, the store manager at Fendi, who actually assisted us with the appointment, also fantastic. So thank you so much, Adam, for all your help. Thanks for putting up with me. But both of these two were really, really good, like wing women and men to have around because you just need someone to like snap you back into it. But Dale um, and Adam, they both pulled out all the colors. They were like, okay, well this you won't want, this you won't want, this you won't want. Then we had like a maybe pile. So we kind of separated all the other colors out from it. And then we kind of stuck with all the blues and the kind of deeper greens just to see what would kind of work with the leather samples. So from that, we came up with um, a really deep navy blue, which almost looks black, but in the light, it, the blue tones come through. Then a sky blue, and then this deep blue python. So we had visioned, which I'll put up on the screen now. This is the mock-up of the bag. So the outside is in the deep dark blue, the inside is the light sky blue, and then it's hard to kind of see because it's so dark, but the handle is in the python. But the sample um, I'll put on the screen as well. And I obviously liked this bag, but I thought, I thought oh, it's quite conservative for what it is. And 
I just was kind of like, I like it, but I'm not excited about this bag. It was just a bit, you know, a bit of, it just didn't hit it. It was like an eight out of 10. And it's like, girl, this needs to be like 12 out of 10. So we saved that design and thought, let's play around with some other things. So opened up a new design, started with the Palladium hardware again, and then we looked at doing a different internal color. But anyways, as Dale and Adam were talking, I kind of put all the samples out on the table and thought, no, I really do love this sky blue. I'm just gonna put it on the outside and see how it looks. And um, Dale says that when I did that, she said my eyes like lit up. I was like, wow, this is so pretty. So I was kind of like, wow, it just really pops this light blue on the bag. Then we kind of reevaluated re the Python samples and then picked out this matte stone colored Python, which I think looks absolutely freaking epic. And I was like, matched up with the light blue. And I thought these two just go together so well, like such a good combo. And with the internal color, the peekaboo for the men's is a little bit different to the women's where the internal color really is really quite, has to be quite striking in my opinion, because it's quite a focal point. The actual zipper liner thingy that zips up the pocket, it has like this little flabby tab bit that sticks out the side or you can tuck it in. But because of that, it's quite a focal point of the bag. And also you see a lot of the internal color. So I thought, mm, how are we gonna do this? And um, we kind of found this one color called, <laughs> bit of a had to be there in the moment joke, but it's called Milk. Couldn't get over it, it was hilarious because at the start of the appointment, I was like, get rid of this milk color. I'm never gonna have that anywhere near the bag. Like, let's not even talk about it. And then, you know, the milk color came up. So. Ultimately, I picked all of these colors for my bag. Da, 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 da. So the outside is in this beautiful light blue. The inside is in the milk color. And the handle and strap is in this matte stone python. Oh, it looks so good. Um, now, the final kind of design from the Fendi app thing makes the internal color look very green, um, but it's not green. The photo I put up here with Dale holding the samples, um, that's what the colors really look like. So the milk color is like an off-white and it just goes perfectly with all, all three colors. Um, so yeah, I've probably explained this terribly, so I do apologize for that. Once I saw that bag just on the actual iPad with all the colors. I was just like, yeah, that's the one. It's so, it's the perfect amount of playfulness that you should want to get out of an MTO, but without being over the top where you just wouldn't reach for it as much because you've gone so out there. So I, I feel like I really nailed the balance and I'm so glad that the team obviously at Fendi was so patient and could go through it all with me. Dale was so patient. She was actually having a ball. She was just in her element as well. I think she was kind of just like, oh my God, because she's such a Fendi fanatic, she kind of just likes the experience regardless of if it's for her or not. Um, but it's just absolutely pretty. And on the inside, you get to put a word or a name or something on the uh, serial number plate. Um, I originally had opted for my initials, so it was C.B, but then Dale was like, Connor, that's so boring. Like put just Connor, like I think that would be better. So I ended up just putting my first name Connor, which I'm glad I did. I feel like it's a lot more personal, not so serious, goes with the, the overall kind of vibe of the bag. Um, but She's done, she's ordered, and I'm so freaking excited. Now, when I first talked about this MTO, I got a lot of questions about the price and the kind of overall process. Now, this was not a, from what I believe, something that you have to be offered. I don't think that this is, you've got to have a high store spend. I think this is just something that Fendi offered to clients that they think would be interested. Um, and I think it's such a great way to get a taste of a made to order experience without paying the huge prices that it can go up to when you go through exotics and beating and stuff like that. Um, but this was offered to me obviously through osmosis with Dale, but, um, the price point for this bag. So if I were to go and buy the off the shelf mini peekaboo with the Python handle that at the moment retails for 7,400 Australian dollars, this made to order bag, which has the Python handle and strap, obviously custom for all the things that I wanted. Um, it costs 8,900 Australian dollars and I had to pay a 50% deposit for the bag to be made. And it's probably going to take about eight months. Um, 
Adam, the store manager, said it'll probably be, take about six months to be made, and then the rest of the time it'll be in um, the CITES um, customs in Australia because of the exotic leather. So I'm fine with that. It gives me time to say for the other half, but um, that's basically what you'd be looking at. Um, I believe when I did a mock-up on the pre-appointment day and I put Python on the sides, I think it was just under $11,000. Um, I think having like the crystal hardware was like $400 extra. So every time you put on something or take something away, obviously it changes the price. But for the all leather version with the Python handle and strap, it was just under $9,000. To me, it's an investment, absolutely, a personal investment, of course. But to get something that's exactly what I wanted, something that I've had an experience with Dale with as well, and it's just something that I'm obviously going to have forever. To me, it's worth it. Um, and because you have to pay half up front and then the other half in nine months, it's like you've just bought one four and a half thousand dollar bag and then you're just buying another four and a half thousand dollar bag, right? That's the logic I'm using in my head anyways. But look, it's gonna be amazing. I can't freaking wait until it comes. But that's the kind of general gist of the appointment system. If you have any other kind of questions, like feel free to pop them down in the comments or ask me and I'll be more than happy to ask them. But if it's something that you really want to do and it's something that you can afford to do, I would strongly recommend holding out for a made to order appointment to come up or whenever this kind of system comes up again or ask your sales associate if it can be done. I would highly recommend doing it. It's such a personal thing to do. It's such a special experience. And to me, I think it's the basis of what luxury is. Absolutely obnoxious and personalized and catered to you. And I just think it was so worth it. And I can't freaking wait. Have I said that yet? <laughs> but thank you so much for the Fendi Brisbane store and Adam. Thank you so much, Dale, for coming with me and being my milk wing woman. Oh, personal joke, everyone. And thanks so much, guys, for watching. Please give this video the thumbs up and consider subscribing if you have not already. And yeah, thank you. And I'll see you all next time. <laughs>